Hello, it's John Heaton, and today another Dylan review, Planet Waves, the album from January the 17th, 1974. Um, so to put this in context, it was the follow-up to the, uh, if you count it as an album, the album Dylan, which Dylan quickly put out, or the, the record company pr quickly put out the previous year against his wishes. Um, first proper follow-up since New Morning, and also the, from 1970. And the previous year, 73, had also seen Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid uh, soundtrack music as well. So, and then late at the back end of 74 that uh, came out Blood on the Tracks. So this was, this album actually un, unfairly often gets uh, lost in the mix in comparison to what followed, Blood on the Tracks and Desire in particular, uh, which I think is a bit unfair and I'm gonna quietly sing its praises today because I think it's a remarkable album. Um, so the other thing to say is, so this album was recorded with the band who Bob had toured with in the mid 60s uh, during all the controversy about Dylan going electric. Um, Dylan had toured with them and had also recorded a wealth of material in 1967 called The Basement Tapes. But when this album came out in January 74, those basement tapes had not been officially released, although they had surfaced on bootlegs. So maybe the general public were not fully aware of uh, how much Bob had worked with the band. So the band being Rob, Robbie Robertson on guitar, Rick Danko on bass, Levon Helm on drums, Garth Hudson on organ, and Richard Manuel on piano. Um, and they were to go on tour with this album uh, and release a double album called Bit Before the Flood, which was very much a comeback tour from Bob, his first major tour in uh, eight years, really. And uh, he was on top form vocally and um, really belted out the vocals, particularly on the opening track, uh, Most Likely You Go Your Way, I'll Go Mine. Um, and they did play a few songs from this album on that tour, but by the time the, out the tour finished, those, those songs had stopped being performed, even Forever Young. Although Forever Young was later performed uh, frequently by Dylan, and is to this day. Um, and uh, the other one which was also performed, Going, Going, Gone, I think, on the tour, but not, not, by the time the album came out, there was nothing from this album. So but that's not the first time Bob has done that in his career, released an album, gone out on the road, and refused to promote it. Uh, it's pretty consistent, he's been pretty consistent like that. So here is the inner sleeve with the credits. Uh, I presume this is hand, handwritten by Bob uh, with the songs and the, uh, and the illustration on the front cover is from Bob as well. We have cast iron songs and torch ballads written here, which may have been a, a working title name for the album. And then Moon Moon Glow here, written, which again might have been a working title for the album. And I, actually I read that uh, this album was going to be called Ceremonies of the Horseman, or something similar from, from uh, one of those mid-60s songs of his. Um, but they, they changed their mind about that. I'll just try and look that up here, sorry. Uh, yeah, a reference to the, um, the song Love Minus Zero, No Limit. Uh, anyway, it came out as Planet Waves, and uh, because partly because of the tour uh, that was launched simultaneously, uh, I can't really think of any other reason, but this album got to number one in the US, and it was his first number one of his career, um, and number seven in the UK. So I think it's very much a return to form. I think it's better than New Morning. I think it's his best album since um, Nashville Skyline, and uh, although not, not as strong as Blood on the Tracks, a, a pretty decent effort, um, and not overplayed over the years, so it's quite, quite an undiscovered album, which you can go back to often, and it's not been played to death or anything like that. Um, the subject matter is interesting because he was going through a domestic period at the time, and I think he was coming out of that because I can't find too many straight love songs like you had done on New Morning to the, uh, you know, have a bunch of kids who call me Pa, that's what, that must be what it's all about, that kind of stuff. Uh, here, 
you've got quite a few songs which, if they're not about another woman other than Sarah, they, they certainly sound like it. <laughs> uh, Hazel, for example. I mean, it could have been a, a made-up name, or for, for all I know. Hazel, dirty blonde hair, wouldn't be ashamed to be seen with you anywhere. Um, I guess it's not about Sarah and Tough Mama. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, I'm reading too much into this, but I, I got the impression from listening to this album that you could see see the, the seeds being planted of the, the troubled divorce which was to follow. Um, uh, so let's go through the tracks. On the light like this, uh, lots to reminisce. So again, He's very pleased to meet up with someone, but I, I don't, it sounds like a reunion of sorts. Um, Joan Bias, perhaps? I don't know. Uh, it's pretty useless to speculate uh, on Bob Dylan's songs, isn't it, really? You're not going to get much uh, insight from the man himself in interviews and stuff. So uh, it's a very uplifting song, though, having said that. Great musicianship from the band, as always, and a good opener to the album. And then Going, Going, Gone. The next track is just outstanding. The chord changes, Robbie Robertson's very delicate acoustic guitar picking all the way through. I think this is an absolutely brilliant track. And uh, as good as anything on Blood and the Tracks, I'll go as far as to say that. I really love this track. Tough Mama. I don't have the lyrics to hand, but uh, a very rock, good rocker and uh, written about someone or other. And, uh, uplifting song and Hazel as I mentioned beautiful again apart from the words beautiful chord changes and beautifully sung and uh, he's, he's obviously impressed with someone called Hazel or some character or other female um, and it's very moving not quite sure what Sarah would have thought of it had she been played this album at the time at home <laughs> something there is about you this is about the closest to a straight love song on the album I'm not sure who it's about. Could be about Sarah, actually. Uh, uh, very moving, good song. Forever Young, uh, written about Bob's son, and uh, just turned into an all-time classic. There are two versions of this song on the album. There's the slow ballad version, and then there's the kind of up-tempo version with the band. And uh, I love both versions. I think they contrast well with each other, ending side one and beginning side two. I think that probably the slow version is the is the is the definitive one, um, and the words are timeless. Uh, may you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and the, see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright, and be strong. And may you stay forever young. Uh, just a timeless song, and Bob was to perform this. Often as the closer to his concerts after this album, and famously at the last waltz with the band, the whole concert finished with um, with this song, and then uh, <clears throat> then a version of "I Shall Be Released." So, uh, with everyone taking part, and a great great concert, last waltz. Um, we have a piano song called "Dirge," where Bob is. Um, I think this was recorded in two takes. He just sat down and tried it on the piano. I think having previously tried it on the guitar, maybe. And then he just said to Robbie, maybe you could play something over this. And then Robbie just does his delightful uh, guitar playing over the top of it. And uh, very uh, emotionally sung by Bob. Apparently this song is about his early experience in New York City. You Angel You is a kind of uplifting song, singing the praises of um, certain someone, not sure who. Uh, Dylan later claimed this, this, this song was a bit fake and uh, made up lyrics. Of, he wasn't too fond of it, uh, but I think it's decent. Uh, Never Say Goodbye is a kind of moody, I wouldn't say love song, but it's it, he's pining about someone and uh, very, you know, Dylan back on form lyrically here with um, Twilight on the Frozen Lake, North Wind about to break, old footprints in the snow and silence down below. Uh, some great lines in this song. A bit overlooked, this song in general, but uh, I played it about three times in a row the other day, trying to understand the lyrics. 
Uh, didn't really come to any conclusion other than it's a beautiful song, great, great chord changes, etc. Then we have Wedding Song, which, uh, which closes the album and uh, is pretty much definitely written about Sarah. And uh, here you can see the, the clearest seeds towards what happened subsequently. Although he's pretty upbeat here and he's not, uh, he's not desperate like he was on Sarah. He's not pleading her to come back. They haven't split up yet, I don't think. And uh, he's not uh, having a go at her like on Idiot Wind, or he's not, um, you know, heartbroken, singing lines like, uh, like a corkscrew to my heart ever since we've been apart. So this is the prelude, if you like. And uh, some great words in here. One verse is, never been my duty to remake the world at large, nor is it my intention to sound a battle charge. Because I love you more than all of that, when a love that doesn't bend. And if there is eternity, I'll love you there again. Yep, I think this uh, the song is a great closer to the album, and uh, this album is overlooked. I think it's uh, one of the best in his, if not one of the very best in his canon, one of the you know top 10 or 15, in my opinion. I think it's overlooked. Great musicianship from the band, great singing, rejuvenated, rejuvenated songwriting from Bob on this album. And of course, uh, he would go from strength to strength after this uh, songwriting-wise. Thank you for watching. See you next time.